We're turning trash into treasure. It's the going green concept that is rocking the craft world. And today we're taking on the dreaded craft room and showing you a few simple ideas to make any small space a little bit more organized. I'm Kim. And I'm Chris. And you're watching The DIY Dish. Welcome back everyone to another episode of the DIY Dish. Now I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like I have a long way to go in the green department. Yep. <laughs> but what I do know is that even the small changes can make a really big difference. Absolutely. And while today we're going to share some ideas for your craft space, these same concepts can be used when trying to organize just about any space in your home. And we all have them, don't we? <laughs> Absolutely. And first, it starts with just looking around your home and seeing how you can creatively use what you already have. That's right. So just a few weeks ago, we posed this question on our Facebook fan page. What is one household item you would normally just toss in the trash or even in the recycling bin without a second thought? The response was amazing. And today we thought we'd tackle a few of those everyday household items and put a creative twist on them. We've got a lot to share, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, one of the things that I find is a big problem is just all the stuff you have in yes. the craft room. The buttons, the glue beads. sticks, the beads, <laughs> all that kind of stuff, or in your junk drawers in the kitchen or that kind of thing. Yeah. So we've come up with this really simple idea of taking glass jars that from you food know containers, food containers mm -hmm. spaghetti jars, popcorn mm -hmm. containers, mayonnaise containers, <laughs> you salad dressing it. bottles. We <laughs> all have it and it just feels like a bunch of stuff and you hate to throw it out. So we've come up with this clever little idea. Fun. Okay, what you need is those empty glass jars, of course, em uh, empty glass or plastic jars. Um, you also need chalkboard paint and a chalkboard pen marker mm -hmm. and contact paper. Fun. We also have some free templates that you can download from the DIYdish.com. So be sure and, and run over and grab those. Okay, so what I did is real simple. Here, this is a popcorn jar. <laughs> and I actually oh. uh, just masked off uh, some lines with some masking tape and then painted the lines that I didn't mask off right. with the chalkboard paint. Yep. What I love about the chalkboard paint, of course, is that with a chalkboard or a pen, you can actually write directly on it. Mm -hmm. And if you decide that you wanna change what's in the jar, all you have to do is erase take it. A, erase it, yeah, yeah, with a wet washcloth, and then you can redo it again. I love the look of the chalkboard pen versus regular chalk, mm -hmm. too. It just is a cleaner look to it. Yeah. Here we've got a, a jar for the buttons. This mm. was an old spaghetti jar. <laughs> of course, we've got the glue sticks. So cute. Even our crochet hooks. This was an old spice jar that we used. Can you see yeah. how this is all going to look in our office? I love it. It's and all the nice. different looks of it. You mm -hmm. know, each bottle is so unique and different. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So here we have a mason jar. And I can't bear to throw out scrap ribbon. So I like <laughs> to save it because you never know when you'll need it. Exactly. And I just traced a circle onto some clear contact paper and then cut that out and this becomes a, a stencil of sorts. Right, because it's actually going to stick onto the mm -hmm. glass jar. That's right. Okay, so then I'll just take this here and let's see, we'll just place it there. Again, this is our circle, uh, but we also have a template for a fancy little frame as well. Okay, just carefully put that onto your jar and then take your chalkboard paint and just gently, let's see, let's push that around all edges so you don't have any coming through. And then I'm just going to do a thin layer through or across that jar. Now this is going to look a little funny at first because uh, you'll definitely see the lines in the paint. But what I like to do is take a thin layer let it dry for a few minutes, mm -hmm. then take a second layer of paint and two layers should pretty much do it and yeah. cover it up. Mm -hmm. So once you've done that, let's see, let's finish that off. Oh, this is really okay. simple. Really easy. Again, one layer, let it dry, a second layer. When you're done with that, carefully peel that off because you don't want to pull up the paint from it. And then you have something like this. There we go. So cute. Yeah. I and love like it. And like I said, it can wipe off real easily with a wet cloth. So say, for instance, I didn't want to keep bobbins in there anymore. All I have to do is just wipe it off with a wet cloth 
And then I can rewrite with my pen something completely something different. different. I also like how you took the chalkboard paint to the lids. Yes, I actually mm -hmm. covered the lids too because of course those have labels on them from what was in the jar. Mm -hmm. And so I painted the lids and now I can write on the lids as well. Yeah, exactly. Let's see. This is so fun. I mean, and look at the character of this popcorn lids. jar. I mean, <laughs> it looks like it's almost as if a, yeah. a lid was actually on there. That's a, right. A full size lid. Yeah, so a lot so. of fun ideas. Okay, so Great. what do you have, Chris? Okay, you know another thing I love to do with glass jars is actually to make them into vases, especially odd shaped jars that are gonna make this project even more interesting. Yeah. And all you need is some yarn and a little bit of glue. Take a look at these pictures we have here. They are so cute, and all we did was take a textured yarn, mm -hmm. you know, a variegated colors, mm -hmm. and you can add it to any room and make a whole new look. Oh, that looks so chic, too. And I love it. You're simply using a little dab of glue and some yarn, and you wrap it around, and it's easy. It can yeah. be done in minutes. Yeah. So there's a couple of ideas mm -hmm. for you. What about this one right here? Okay. Here we have... Um, the bottom of a two liter bottle, mm -hmm. okay? You cut that off. We oh, all yeah. have these lying around, right? Yeah. And then you take a little bit of bias tape and simply place it over the edges so that you don't have that raw cut edge there. Mm -hmm. And look at the nice trim it makes. I love that. And I mean, how many of us have just those little doodads that need to fit inside a bowl? Exactly. That's a perfect way to display it's it. It's the perfect size little bowl. Yeah. You can add a little bit of hot glue to make sure that those stay. You can also do the same thing over here. Actually, I cut it off a little bit uh, where it's a little taller. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, adding that double wide bias tape around. I have a great place for the kids' crayons or any other little doodads you have. Secure it with a little bit of hot glue, cut the ends, oh, and now it. you have a container that uh, takes Perfect. on a whole new look. Perfect. So how about another item to tackle? <laughs> what about all those boxes yes. that we have? Uh, diaper boxes, paper boxes. Oh. I mean, we all have them, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and baskets can be quite expensive yeah. to provide storage with. If you have some lying around, it's great, but to have to go out and buy more baskets, oh, they can cost anywhere from 20 to 30 and up. Exactly. Dollars. So take those paper boxes, those larger size boxes, and create something new again yeah. with them. And all you're gonna have to do is you could cover it with fabric sure. or paper, sure. but I'm gonna actually take a grocery sack brown grocery sack or even uh, a lunch sack, mm -hmm. and I've cut it apart just mm -hmm. like this, okay? And I'm going to add this to my box, but before I do, I wanna create a little bit of texture to it, okay? So, I'm going to crumble it up real nice and yeah. tight. love it. You can see what's <laughs> gonna happen here. You know, your kids would have so much fun <laughs> doing the crumpling for you. Yeah. Okay. okay. I love right. the texture that adds. Exactly. And then take this, add a little bit of spray glue, the spray adhesive, mm -hmm. okay? Sure. Add it there, mm -hmm. add it onto the box, wrap the box around okay. with it, and you've got a new covered box. I'm gonna sh show you right over here. This is where I took oh, the I paper, added it around the box, but then I also used what a, whatever else I had on hand, which was ribbons, mm -hmm. I had burlap. Sure. I mean, really, all you have to do is look through your drawers yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in your uh, craft area and find all those little extra doodads that you can add to the box. So we added this um, little trim with the burlap, mm -hmm. sure. added some ribbon, and using the same idea that Kim <laughs> showed earlier, we took the lid of a can, uh -huh painted it with chalkboard paint, and wrote uh, down what was inside this box. So fabric, can you imagine? <laughs> red got fabric. lots of scrap fabrics. And so if you're trying to organize those, here we've got white fabric. This time you're taking the fabric once again, like we did with the brown paper bags before, but this time we're going to use burlap because I already have it on hand. Sure. No need to go out and buy anything else. Add the spray glue wrap it around, took some black yarn this time to it, and wrapped it around, kind of ski wampus. <laughs> added my little tag that says white fabric on there, and there, there we go. So lots of different things to do with the paper boxes, yeah. or a diaper box, or any other larger size box.
Great. Well, we hope you've been inspired by that. And finally, to wrap things up, I've got a few ideas to do with those empty toilet paper and paper towel tubes. How about covering them with your favorite paper or fabric, pinching one end, and you've got the perfect sheath protector for your scissors. Exactly. Do that same technique of wrapping, but this time keep both ends open, attach it to the small garbage can you have, and you have a handy dispenser for those plastic grocery sacks. These same tubes become the ideal way to keep your electric cords tangle-free in that craft room as well. So are you beginning to imagine all the possibilities? We hope we've been able to inspire you to look at things that you already have on hand and add that little creative twist to make them useful once more. There are literally thousands of ideas out there on repurposing, recycling, upcycling, and once you begin, the mindset is going to be contagious. I love it. To close, we want to thank today's sponsor, YouCanMakeThis.com. Be sure to check out their website for many more ideas you can do along this recycling theme as well as literally hundreds of downloadable patterns you can begin to make today. That's right. We appreciate you joining us today. We'd love to see what you are doing to craft in a more earth-friendly kind of way. Be sure to post on our blog at thediydish.com or add your photos to our Facebook and Flickr pages. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. We hope you felt that creativity was served. Goodbye. Bye.